All right, good morning, everybody. Our, our, our friend Sam here asked a question in Halacha, and it's a very simple answer. It's, it's very simple. It's already in the Mishnah. That what is the law about a, a regular Kohen marrying a, a Jewish woman who is not a virgin? Is, a, is, his, is their child a, a, a Kohen? The answer is yes on certain conditions. Uh, the main thing is, first of all, the Kohen cannot, uh, the Kohen Godol has to marry a virgin. Uh, the Kohen can marry, uh, the women that he is not allowed to marry are three in the Halacha. <coughs> a Grusha, a Zona, and a Halola. A Grusha means a divorced woman. You know, someone who was married according to Jewish law and divorced according to Jewish law is not allowed to marry a Kohen. Uh, however, it's been pointed out, let's say they were married not according to Jewish law. Uh, we've had, we had this in our shul. Uh, there was someone, uh, there was, uh, he married a, a two Kohanim, the brothers, and they both married divorced women. And we asked according to Moshe Feinstein's psaq, were at the first marriage were you married by an Orthodox rabbi? They said no. Uh, no. Or really the question is, it's a halachic ceremony. But uh, Moshe holds that a uh, conservative ceremony is not halachic. We can, we can argue that, but let's, let's be lenient according to Moshe here. Uh, so therefore, they're not considered to be as a divorced woman. Now, we didn't ask about these other issues, so meeting it, because they didn't want to do it in the shul, and we said, no, you can do it because they're not divorced according to Jewish law, and you're allowed to marry them. Now, we didn't know about these other questions, uh, which uh, is it the other two questions. So there's a chalola, so that uh, is a female version of a cholol. A cholol is someone who uh, violated the laws of, you know, a, a, a Kohen married a woman who was not uh, allowed to marry a Kohen, then the, then we have uh, the child is a cholol, and the, so the female is a cholola. And it would seem the same things here, even a woman maybe who is not supposed to marry a Kohen who did, who could also be called a cholola. That's it's different part of the question, not everyone agrees to that, but in any event, that's the other thing, the chalola, and then the, the, the third is the zona, now in English, we think the word zona means someone who takes money, that's not what it means, it means someone who's promiscuous, particularly with someone who they're not allowed to be married to. Uh, so if they're promiscuous with someone they are allowed to be married to, even though that's not what you that's not the way you're supposed to conduct yourself, they could still marry a Kohen. Uh, as long as they're single. You know, if they're uh, you know when it comes to you know, obviously if they're married, they can't be married to someone else. Well a woman cannot be married to another man while she's already married. So uh, so that's what we talk about the zona. So particularly um, that would include sleeping with a non-Jewish man. And therefore, uh, if, a, if a Jewish woman ever sleeps with a non-Jewish man, she could never marry a Kohen. You know, I, we don't recognize such a marriage as being a marriage. However, if she's promiscuous as a single person with a Jewish man that she could technically marry, but she doesn't marry him, so then it's not an issue of being a divorcee because she wasn't married to him, she was being promiscuous with him. Even though it's considered to be derech znus, it's considered to be promiscuity and it's sinful, nonetheless it does not render her to be invalid to the Kohen. And then the other case, the other obvious case, is the almona. The, uh, <coughs> is, is, so, uh, so, 
meaning that's what I'm saying. So that's the case of a woman who is, she's not a virgin, she was promiscuous with a Jewish man, then she would still be allowed to marry a Kohen, uh, or if she was the victim of a Jewish man, the same thing. Um, when it comes to marrying a Kohen, uh, even if, if it's, it's a victimhood, uh, you know, even, let's say, they're married, they have to divorce, they're forced to divorce, there's no, there's no uh, allowance for that, it's very strict. I, I understand it's unfortunate, but that's the, that's the halacha. Uh, and it's very, very uncomfortable. But then, the, so the other uh, category, of course, is the almona, the widow, passing by the, the place where we hit the cow again. So the almona, the widow, is allowed to marry a Kohen. So that's a, another obvious case of someone who's not a virgin, but she is allowed to marry a Kohen, and therefore, of course, also the children are Kohanim. Uh, so uh, that would, that's the other, the, the third case that we have here, uh, an obvious case of a woman who's, who's not a virgin but can marry a Kohen and her children would be, her sons would be Kohanim. The, uh, for those who don't know, a Kohen means a priest, and it's specifically the line of Aaron. Father to son all the way back goes to Aaron. And the uh, mother is someone who is allowed to marry a priest. Now the reason why the reason why a convert cannot marry a Kohen is uh, she is assumed to have been promiscuous even though it wasn't the sin for her as a non-Jewish woman uh, but she is assumed to either have been promiscuous or have been victimized uh, as a non-Jewish woman by a non-Jewish man uh, this is more because that was the culture in the ancient times, certainly, in the pre-Christian times. There was a, a tremendous amount of abuse, particularly in ancient Rome, ancient Greece, in Babylonia, all these, uh, Egypt, uh, Canaan, all of these countries. Uh, and so for that reason, the Gioras is labeled to be the Zona. Again, it doesn't, it's not necessarily a judgment call on the convert. It's just merely that's the halachic ramifications there. Uh, and that's why, you know, uh, 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 that's the reason why a convert. So there's a question of a giyor is pochus mi bas gimel. That if, it's, if, the, if the woman converted before she was three years old, <coughs> then we, we would assume that she wasn't abused um, and wasn't being promiscuous and, and uh, still I, I, we generally do not accept that uh, but the children of converts are allowed to marry Kohanim and there's no problem with that because uh, and, and the thing is it's a low plug it's there's no difference, even if we know for sure that this girl is a virgin. Uh, we can't. We the law applies equally um, for, for the uh, the Gioris, the convert. Still, would not be allowed to marry the Kohen. We want to discuss whether that's from Torah law or from rabbinical law. It's a different story. But as far as what it, what it is. That's what it is. It's, it's, uh, she, you know, she's not allowed, um, and the children will not be kohanim in any way. Uh, so that's so certainly, certainly, there's no doubt, particularly with the case of the almona, the case of the widow. Now, the widow cannot marry the kohen gadol, the one high priest, and the, there isn't any one time. But if if someone was already married to a widow and he's appointed a high priest, he can stay with her. You know, just while he's a high priest, he has to, if he's going to get married again, uh, and the thing is, I, they usually are not appointing someone a high priest who's single. The priest has to be married uh, to serve as a high priest. 
because he has to atone for himself and his household. The base of Zuishto, his household as his wife. And my wife is calling me, so I better go. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. We'll see you later.